Hello everybody. On behalf of the principal and the management, we are pleased to have everyone on board for this science exhibition through the efforts made by all our students, teachers and staff members at Julian Day School, Elgin Road, Kolkata, that this event was made possible. Our science exhibition target is to encourage innovation through science among the young generation as they are the nation's future. This exhibition focuses on innovation at its best. The exhibition focuses on upholding the subsistence of the youngsters. We invite everybody to show their support and share their perception of this creative science exhibition. Students remember, science doesn't have to be all textbooks and experiments. There are loads of out of the box ways to learn about science. Thank you one and all. God bless all of you and best of luck. Hello everyone, I am Dhirubha Kupal from class 3A. Here in this experiment, I am going to find out if the size of the particles affect the making of a solution. For this experiment, I need three transparent glass cups filled with water. I have labeled them A, B and C, a bowl of powdered sugar, a bowl of granular sugar and a bowl of sugar crystals. So, I will take powdered sugar and pour it into cup A. I will stir it and it has completely dissolved. Now, I will take granular sugar and pour it into cup B. I will stir it. It has not completely dissolved, so I stir it a bit more. And now it has completely dissolved. Now, I will take sugar crystals and pour them into cup C. I will stir. It has not dissolved yet, so I am stirring it more. And now it has completely dissolved. So, powdered sugar dissolves quickly within a few seconds of stirring. Sugar granules takes longer time to dissolve than powdered sugar and sugar crystals takes the most time to dissolve. Through this experiment, I have learned that the size of the particles affects the making of a solution. The bigger the size of the solid particles, the longer it takes for it to dissolve. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Hans Bakshi from class 3B. Today I will do one science experiment. My science experiment is to observe evaporation and condensation materials needed some water a pen a swallow dish a glass and some ice now i am going to pour some water into the swallow dish and mark it with a pen and put it in a sunny place. Next, I am going to take some ice and put it in a glass and keep it in a warm room. After a few hours, we can see that water in the swallow dish kept in the sunny place has been dried up thus showing that evaporation has taken place. We can also see that the outer surface of the glass is covered with water droplets, showing that the condensation has taken place. Water has condensed from the air onto the cold surface. Though we can see that the process by which liquid changes into gases 
is called evaporation. The process by which water vapor changes into liquid is called condensation. Thank you. I am Arsharif. I am from class 5A. Today, I am going to explain the process of food chain. As you can see, the plants are producers. Plants produce their own food. Animals like giraffe, cows are herbivores. They will eat the plants. And when the giraffe, this giraffe will be eaten by the lion or the tiger. And when they die, they will be decomposed. The organism in their body will break down and return to soil. And this will be used for the plants for their growth. Hello everyone, my name is Aishman Jatterjee from class 4A. Today I will demonstrate the process of sedimentation and decantation. These methods are used to separate a mixture of a heavy solid and a liquid. For this experiment, I will use two glasses, sand, a spoon and water. I have a glass of water and I will put the sand to it. Now I will stir the mixture with a spoon. Now we will keep it undisturbed for some time. Now the sand settles down at the bottom of the glass. This process is called sedimentation. Now I will gently pour the clear water into another glass without disturbing the sand at the bottom. This is called decantation. This is how we can separate a mixture of heavy solid and a liquid. Thank you. Hello, my name is Arhan Malik from class 5B. The name of my school is Julian Day School. Today I will demonstrate an experiment on immiscible liquids. Immiscible liquids do not dissolve in each other. Example, oil and water. So, I have a glass of water here and a glass of mustard oil here. Now, I will take the mustard oil and put it into the glass of water. Now, with a spoon, I will gently I try to dissolve it in the water. So now we can see there is a layer of mustard oil in the water. So the mustard oil is not getting dissolved with the water. Thank you. Good morning to respected principal ma'am, vice principal sir, junior coordinator sir, teachers, parents and my dear friends. I am Arno Mujundar of class 4B. Today, I am going to present my activity on the topic force. Now, what is force? Force is any push or pull that changes or tries to change the motion of an object. There are mainly four kinds of forces. Frictional force, gravitational force, muscular force and magnetic force. So first, I will explain frictional force. Frictional force is a force generated when two surfaces or slide against each other. I will show an example. To show this example, I have my table and my toy car. The table has a surface and the four wheels of toy car has a surface. See, the two surfaces are rubbing or sliding against each other. So this is frictional force. Now I will explain gravitational force. Gravitational force is an invisible force that pulls 
every object towards the Earth's center. I will show an example. To show this example, I have my Rubik's Cube. I threw it up. It came back. Why did it come back? It came back because of the gravitational force. So, gravitational force is an invisible force that pulls every object towards the Earth's surface. Now, I will explain muscular force. See, I have a biscuit. Now, I will break this biscuit. I broke this biscuit. In breaking this biscuit, my muscles help me. So, this is a muscular force. Now, I will explain magnetic force. To explain magnetic force, I have my magnetic board and letters. The letters have iron in it. I am feeling one force over here. It attracts with the letter A. Let's see with the letter N. It attracts with the letter N. Let's see with the letter T. It also attracts with the letter T. Thank you. I am Shubhalakshmi Mukhopadhyay from class 8b and today I am going to show you the process of freezing. Freezing is the process in which liquid is converted into solid at a constant temperature. To show the process of freezing we need a glass of water, an ice tray and a freezer. Step 1. Put the water in an ice tray. Now put the ice tray into the freezer and leave it for a couple of hours. Let us open the freezer now. Now we can see that the water has turned to ice. As we could see that the water has turned to ice. This is due to the decrease in temperature inside the freezer. The water will again change back to its liquid state because it is now in room temperature. And this reverse process is known as melting. Thank you. Hello, I am Suhani Haldar from class 7b and I will play the guitar which is a string instrument and show you how the strings of the guitar vibrate and produce a sound. This project is guided by our physics teacher Ramana. <laughs> My name is Rudrani Chatterjee from class 7b. The instrument seen in this video is guitar. This is a stringed instrument. Stringed instruments are musical instruments that produce sound from vibrating strings. Guitar, a stringed instrument, has two parts, 
a hollow body and strings. The stretched strings vibrate when plucked or when stroked with the bow to produce sound. The hollow body enhances the sound produced by the strings. The air trapped inside the hollow body forms an air column. The guitar is held flat against the player's body and played by plucking the strings with the dominant hand. Some other examples of stringed instruments are Veena, Santur and Tanpura. Thank you. Hello everybody, this is me Rupa Mukherjee from Class 8A. Today I am going to show you how to make an DIY doctor's stethoscope at home and how to use it carefully. For making this DIY doctor's stethoscope at home, first we need around 1 meter water transparent tube and after getting that we need a copper wire, thin water copper wire. Then we need two earphone buds. We have to place it on the both sides though I have one. Then I am going to show you the rest part. We have to cut the water tube into two halves, 25% aside as the rest 75% we have to keep it aside. Then we have to carefully put the copper wire inside a 25% of the water tube. Then we have to make a small cut and hole in this part and we have to join this both with any kind of tape. I have used cellar tape, you can use any type of tape. Then I have used a tea cup is around 60 milliliter it contains so I've taken a small cup then I've made a hole in it then I have put the tube inside it so that it, it uh, can connect all the vibrations which is mean made up by the heart then I will show you and demo how to use it the person on which we are going to do demo must always breathe more heavily so that the pump which comes, the vibration which comes can be heard by the stethoscope very easily. Yes, we have succeeded. After making this, we can clearly hear the vibrations made by the heart, each and every pump. So it's a very good experiment. We hope you liked our experiment. Thank you. everyone my name is Akanksha Shah and I study in Junior Day School I am in class 7A and our group leader is Abro Pai. Today I am going to show you a physics experiment to show that energy is produced by vibrating particles. Materials will be required is an empty glass, a cup of water and a spoon. We will first pour the water in that empty glass then we will take a spoon and gently strike the spoon in the rim of the glass we will hear a sound and observe the wave of the the wave of the surface in on the water of the glass this is how sound is pr produced by vibrating particles thank you i am snehil pal of class 7a of julian de school and i have made the project of solar cooker which is used for cooking food under the heat of the sun the heat of the sun is absorbed by the black paper which is kept at the lower part of this cooker. The four sides of the cooker are covered with thermocol and wrapped with foil paper so that the heat is not released. The food is entered from here and the solar cooker needs to be under the sunlight so that the food is cooked. The, the heat is trapped in the solar cooker after some time and the food starts getting cooked. After a few minutes we will notice that the food is cooked and it is ready to be eaten. This is how we use a solar cooker to cook food. So hello everyone, I am Nairaj Shaha, I am from Julian Day School, Kolkata. Now I have tried to create an electrically generated a vacuum cleaner. Now how and why does it work? I shall show it to you. Now for this I have used a battery source, a bed switch as you can see it properly and a DC motor, simple DC motor using the fan blades and a pipe, a vacuum pipe. So for this now let's do the working out here. 
Now it's basically based on the principle of that conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy. Conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy, it creates a negative pressure. And on the other hand, it is very much time efficient and it is cost efficient as well. Now, let us show it. As I switch it on, as I switch it on, as I am switching it on, now it gets start, the DC motor rotates and I now it will work as a vacuum cleaner. Wait, see. See. Can you see it? Yes. So therefore we can say that it can work as a vacuum cleaner. Okay, so from here it is very much time efficient on one point and it creates a vacuum here. Now we know that as current is flowing through this conductor which is placed normally, which is placed normally across a magnetic field, it causes an induced force as a result of which the DC motor rotates and as the DC motor rotates the fan blade also rotates and it creates a suction force now how and why the suction force is being created this is because there are certain holes at the back portion of which due to which the fan is blowing and it is pulling inside the air due to a result of the pressure difference outside atmospheric pressure is greater and inside it's a vacuum is being created by the fan and it pulls in the air which is draws out which draws out from the bottle through these holes and therefore this is an electrically generated vacuum cleaner which is cost efficient on one hand and time efficient as well thank you hello everyone i'm driti adhikari from class 9 section a and i'm audra datta from class 9 section a we are going to demonstrate an experiment on inflating a balloon the materials we will be requiring are a water bottle vinegar baking soda and a balloon so let's start the experiment to start the experiment we need a bottle and we need to fill it with vinegar like she is doing after it's done we will add baking soda into the balloon done so now it's done and now we will attach it to the tip of the bottle the water bottle. Okay, so now it's done and now we'll see how it works. As we can see that as baking soda and vinegar mixes, the balloon starts inflating and foam starts forming. So this is how we can inflate a balloon. Now this brings us to a conclusion that when vinegar is added to baking soda, carbon dioxide gas is released and more the gases evolve in the bottle, the larger the balloon will be. Thank, Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Swarabhati Thwasak of ATP. Here I am going to show an experiment on adulteration of edible oil. The materials secret for this experiment are two glass tumblers, spoons, edible oil and butter. The procedure to make this experiment is, I have poured the edible oil in each of the glass. Then I will add some yellow butter to each of them. Then I will stir it well. Now you can see that this oil has changed into reddish color. So we can conclude that this oil is impure and hence this oil is pure.
if we consume this impure oil, we can suffer from vomiting or diarrhea. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Ankar Noy Chaudhuri of Class 8B. Today, I am going to do the experiment with base and acid. Hello, respected principal ma'am, vice principal sir, teachers and my fellow friends. I am Anushka Shah of Class 8B and I am going to demonstrate the experiment with acid and base. To do this experiment, we need a bowl and a spoon, some water, some turmeric powder, some detergent and a lemon. At first, my friend Duncan is pouring some water into the bowl and then he is pouring some turmeric. Now he is stirring it well. We can observe that the color has changed into yellow. Now he is pouring the detergent into the solution that is the base and he is stirring it and now we can observe that the color has become reddish brown and now he is squeezing the lemon into the solution that is the acid again stirring it. Now we can observe that the color has become again yellow. Mm. Oh. Start. Thank you for watching the video. Good morning everyone. I am Krit Naskar from class 6B. I made a volcano at home for my science exhibition which will demonstrate the working of volcanoes. A volcano is an opening in the earth's crust through which lava, volcanic ash and gases escape. Volcanic eruptions are partly driven by pressure from dissolved gas. Beneath a volcano, liquid magma containing dissolved gases rises through cracks in the earth's crust. The eruption of a volcano is generally preceded by earthquakes and by loud rumblings like thunder which may continue on a very high scale during the eruption. The loud rumblings are due to explosive movement of gases and molten rock which are held under very high pressure. There are three types of volcanoes. They are active volcanoes, extinct volcanoes and dormant volcanoes. I had already poured some baking soda and water with some food color into the volcano model and now I am pouring vinegar into the volcano. When we add vinegar to baking soda, it creates carbon dioxide. The gas gets very excited and tries to spread out. There is not enough room in the model for the gas to spread out, so it leaves through the opening very quickly, causing an eruption. Use of volcano model is that we can make a volcano model for educational purpose so that we can understand how volcanoes erupt. Advantage of volcano model is that as most students have never actually seen a volcano, this is an area of learning that remains fairly abstract. Making models of volcanoes provides students with a means to make the unfamiliar more familiar. Disadvantage of volcano model is that as the chemical reaction produces carbon dioxide and erupts, 
we should be more careful so that we don't intake that carbon dioxide which can cause harm to ourselves. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Shubhalakshmi Mukhopadhyay from class 8b and today I am going to show you the differences between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixture with the help of an experiment. To do the experiment we need two glasses of water, sand, salt and a spoon. Step 1. Take a spoon of salt and mix it with the water of the first glass. Make sure that it dissolves well. Step 2. Take a spoonful of sand and try to mix it with the water of the second glass. Now let's observe the two glasses. In the first glass, we cannot see any salt particles. But in the second glass, we can see some sand in the bottom of the glass. In a homogeneous mixture, the components are thoroughly mixed and cannot be seen separately like we have seen for the salt solution. But in the heterogeneous mixture, the components can be separately seen in a solution. So, as a conclusion, we can prove that the homogeneous mixture is different from heterogeneous mixture. Thank you. Mostly, in every person's life, writing is a regular activity. In olden days, quills were used to write. Then people adopted the usage of fountain pens. Nowadays, ballpoint and gel pens are used commonly. The one thing which hasn't changed is the usage of ink. We all know that ink is used to write. But do we know how it's made? In 12,000 BCE, a Chinese inventor, Tian Liqiu, created black ink for writing using organic components of pine tree and lamp oil. He added gelatin to the mixture to make it complete. This first black ink became very popular in China and its surrounding areas. The Egyptians had also created their own form of ink in around 2500 BC by blending carbon and gum. It was dried in the shape of sticks. They were dipped in water and used on papyrus paper. The two main ingredients are a dye which dissolves in the ink and the chosen pigment which has to be ground before it is added. So it will blend into the mixture and not settle to the bottom or separate. The combinations of dyes and pigments coupled with the other ingredients which in around 2500 BC by blending carbon and gum. It was dried in the shape of sticks. They were dipped in water and used on papyrus paper. The two main ingredients are a dye which dissolves in the ink and the chosen pigment which has to be ground before it is added. So it will blend into the mixture and not settle to the bottom or separate. The combinations of dyes and pigments coupled with the other ingredients will vary depending upon how the ink will be used. So, after the combination of the dyes and pigments are complete, they will be combined with water, possibly alcohol or linseed oil, depending upon the ink being manufactured and the other chemical ingredients that reflect the type of project the ink will be used for. All the ingredients are put in a large heated vessel until it is properly dispersed and appears in a smooth liquid form. Some manufacturers even strain the ink mixture through a filter to make sure there are not any sediments left from the ingredients that might impede the rest of the printing process when the ink is used. I hope that my project was interesting. And you got to learn something new today. Thank you. Good morning, teachers. My name is 
section poddar from class 6b today i am going to do an experiment on atmospheric pressure first we have to take a plate small piece of candle one match stick and a match box to burn the candle and two glass one filled with ink water first we have to burn the candle and we have to put some amount of water on the plate and we then we have to cover the candle with a empty glass and see what happen this is because the flame uses of the oxygen in the cup creating low pressure atmospheric pressure then tries to force it it's away in because the water at the base of the cup has created an air tight seal the pressure difference between the inside and outside of the cup cause the water to rise until the pressure inside the cup is equal to the pressure outside thank you hello everyone i am shomuji banerji from class 8b now i am presenting you how our body circulatory system works for this you need three bottles four bathing straws two bottle caps three cups of water tape and a red color to start you should have you should have one straw sized hole in one bottle cap and two straw sized hole in the other bottle cap mix the red color in the water this will be the blood of our body so the first two bottles about 80% full and leave the third one empty put the bottle cap with one straw sized hole on the first bottle and the bottle cap with two straw sized hole on the second bottle take two bending straws join them like so and secure them with tape then it will be same with the other set of bending straws put the straws into the holes so that all the three bottles are connected now we can demonstrate how our heart pumps blood the heart is made up of four chambers the upper two chambers are known as atrium and the lower two chambers are known as ventricle and the valves control the flow of blood so the first bottle represents the atrium the second bottle represents the ventricle and the third one represents the body using your fingers to pinch the straws they act like valves for controlling the blood to pump blood into the body pinch the straws and squeeze the ventricles watch how the blood flows So as you see the blood travels from the chambers to the body just like our real circulatory system thank you hello this is adun wenji and today i am going to present the components of an animal cell so it is important to know that an animal cell does not have a cell wall it only has a cell membrane so so we come to the components of an animal cell first up we have the cytoplasm 
as you can see over here, the brownish part. It occupies 90% of the cell and is a semi-liquid substance. It appears to be colorless, partly transparent and watery. Many chemical reactions take place here and it is in some state of movement all the time. Start. Next up, we have the lysosome. As, I, as you are seeing over here, the lysosome's function is somewhat similar to the white blood cell of a blood cell. It destroys di and digests foreign substances around them. It protects the cell from any harmful substances such as germs, bacteria, etc. Next, we have the mitochondria. The mitochondria is the cell's energy producers and is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Why is it, the question arises that why is it known like that? This is because it is the place where respiration occurs in the, in the cell and energy is released and stored in the form of adenosyntriphosphate which we commonly say as ATP. Next up, we have the endoplasmic reticulum which are of two types smooth endoplasmic reticulum here and rough endoplasmic reticulum here. The rough endoplasmic reticulum appears to be rough because of the presence of tiny granules called ribosomes in it. The endoplasmic reticulum is the supporting framework of the cell and helps in transportation of material. Moving on with the next one, we have the centrioles. The centrioles are short bundles of microfilaments attached perpendicularly to each other. Moving on, we have the Golgi bodies. The Golgi bodies forms the delivery system of the cell. It secretes enzymes, hormones and other important secretions while it also Golgi bodies help in the transportation of material from one part of the cell to another. Last but not the least, we have the nucleus. The nucleus consists of nuclear membrane, nucleolus and chromatin fibers as you can see over here. So the question arises that why is it known as the most important part of the cell? So the answer is it regulates and coordinates various life processes. It plays an important part in cell division and it has genes which determine heredity. This is the end of my animal cell presentation. Hope you liked it. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I will be showing you the process of potato osmoscope. But first, let us understand what osmosis is. Osmosis is the diffusion of solvent molecules from a region of high water potential to a region of low water potential through a selectively permeable membrane. Now, let us understand this in a simpler way. Osmosis is nothing but the movement of water molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane is a membrane which allows certain molecules to pass through it but does not allow all types of molecules to pass through. For this activity, we will be needing a potato without a peel, a knife, sugar solution, distilled water, a petri dish and two pins. Now coming to the procedure. We have to take the peeled potato and cut both its ends to make it flat. Using the knife, we have to make a cavity in the potato almost up to its end. Then we have to take a beaker of distilled water and pour the petri dish half full with it. Now we have to take the potato and put it on the petri dish containing distilled water. We have to take a beaker of sugar solution and fill the cavity of the potato half with it. Then we have to mark the level of the sugar solution in the potato cavity with a pin. The potato now functions as an osmometer. We have to leave this undisturbed for about 2 hours. After about 2 hours, we have to mark the level of the sugar solution after rising 
with a pin therefore the level of the sugar solution in the potato cavity rises after some time this happens because of the entry of water in the sugar solution through the semi permeable membrane of the potato therefore the movement of water from the petri dish to the cavity occurs due to the difference in the concentration of solvent molecules in the two regions sugar solution in the cavity and pure water in the petri dish thank you hello everyone my name is abhrupal i am from class 7 section a today i am here to determine the conditions needed for setting a curd the materials required the things we need that is the lukewarm milk curd and cold milk and a teaspoon so first what we will do we will take 1 teaspoon of curd and put it into the lukewarm milk and same as to the cold milk now we will keep it covered undisturbed for 8 hours and after that we will see the results so i am back now let's see which one curdles 24 hours are also over so we can see that the lukewarm milk has curdled successfully but the cold milk has not curdled so from this we come to know that curd contains bacteria which is the lactobacillus which needs the warm condition to thrive the milk into curd thank you we are extremely honored and privileged to acknowledge the main pillars of our school we would like to extend our gratitude to our honorable managing trustee mrs s e broughton ma'am our respected chairman mr j g broughton sir thank you so much to the director of education mr derek peters sir a very big thank you to our venerable principal mrs colleen dorothy smith ma'am thank you so very much to our vice principal mr troy watts sir and to our junior coordinator mr stanley sir thank you to all our teachers members of the julian day school family students and each and every one of you